Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on this channel, I post a ton of anti-MLM content. I will link a playlist right here for you and it'll be linked down below. There are over 70 anti-MLM videos on that playlist. I have deep dives. I have Zoom calls that I've snuck into. I have MLM horror story videos and I have videos like today. I am bringing you our 40th MLM top fails video. Where has the time gone? How did we end up here? I have no idea, but in top fails videos like this one, I have compiled clips and reels and photos of things that people have sent to me from the past few weeks. I have rounded up my top 10. I have compiled them for a video and we are going to break them down together. If at any point you come across something multi-level marketing related on social media and you wanna send it to me so I can put it in a video, the instructions for how to do that are in the description box. It does involve Google Drive. I do not really prefer when people send me stuff on Instagram because I lose it. I cannot keep track of it there, but I made the instructions very detailed in the description box if you find something that you want to send my way. And of course, if any of this kind of content sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, consider liking this video. I love receiving comments as well. All of those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. But let's not waste any more time. I have some pure gold to show you today. And honestly, I feel like I say that with every top fails video, but I'm not kidding. It's been a couple weeks since I've done one of these. I feel like the quality of these clips is top notch. I cannot wait, let's do it. On today's episode of Huns pitching their business opportunity while driving, here we have a Lavelle rep getting really, really angry at people who are anti MLM. Don't talk or I need to make some side money, right? I need, I need a side gig, but no MLMs. You see it all the time in mom groups. Like I'm in all these mom groups and they're always freaking saying it, okay? And I need I need a side gig, I need to make more money, but I don't, no MLMs. Or I need a new shampoo, but no MLMs. I need, um, looking for a protein drink, but no MLMs. I need a new mascara, but no MLMs. How the hell do you know that that um, MLM mascara or that MLM shampoo or that MLM protein drink, um, you are gonna love it and that you're not gonna get amazing results with it. Obviously she's very upset because she's in a bunch of Facebook groups and she's probably there to prey on people for her Lavelle business. But coincidentally, the people in these groups are looking for recommendations, but they specify no MLMs. I do not support that. And she appears to be very frustrated by that. But here's the little piece that she's missing. When people say that they're looking for product recommendations and they specify no MLMs, that's because they don't want their money going towards a predatory business model that disempowers powers women. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the products. And I think that that's where she's getting hung up. Most people don't say no MLMs because they just automatically assume that the product is crap. I mean, potentially, yeah, some people could be saying that, but most of the time it's because people have already made the decision that I'm not going to financially support this business structure. And so therefore they will never under any circumstances even begin to consider trying the products. And I say this a ton on my channel, but I do not care if the MLM product works as perfectly as you say it does, I don't care if it's the best of its kind on the market. I will still never give a dime of my money to that company and I will go and find a similar product at a cheaper price point somewhere else. And wow, God forbid that a freaking mom like me, my phone keeps overheating, it's so annoying. Um, it's this freaking mount. So God forbid like somebody like me or a college student just trying to make like some side, like a side thing, you know, make some freaking commission off of your sale. Is that what you're worried about? Are you worried about somebody making some money for being your personal consultant on whatever product they're helping you with? Are you worried like the product isn't gonna work, but you're not worried about that when you go into Costco and buy your freaking mascara that was made in some other country probably? Um, sorry. I'm over it. I'm freaking over it. You people that are like that, that are so anti MLM for no freaking good reason, because there is no good reason, are freaking lame, okay? Oh wow, this just keeps getting better and better. No, there are good reasons that people are anti MLM. You just don't wanna listen to those reasons. You do not want to acknowledge that those reasons are valid. You cannot claim that somebody's viewpoints aren't valid if you're not willing to educate yourself on that viewpoint. That's called being close-minded and willful ignorant. In other words, being completely okay with not listening to outside perspectives, only staying focused on what you believe to be true and refusing to acknowledge or accept anything that goes against what you believe. That is called being willfully ignorant and that's what we are seeing here. Like you're anti helping people. You're anti supporting small business. You are anti 
like everything. You are all about supporting big box and you know what happens when you go to fucking Target. Sorry, excuse my French if your kids are around, but I'm fired up about this. You know what happens when you go to Target and you buy your mascara there? The fucking CEO of Target makes a bunch of money and the person who rang you up at the register makes 15 bucks an hour. You know what happens when you buy mascara from a freaking Mary Kay or pharmacy girl? They make a huge commission on that and they get to stay home or they with their babies and support and still bring in enough money and not have to go drop their kid off at fucking daycare every day. That's what they get. Or they get to make that enough side money to pay their car payment every month. And maybe they're not living check to check now from their nine to five job. God forbid you support somebody. She is so, so, so painfully misinformed on this topic. It is hurting me. Being anti-MLM is the furthest thing, okay, another universe away from being anti-small business or anti-supporting women. And this is a topic that deserves its own video. And I've been sitting on it for a long time because it's heavy and it's so complex and it's so nuanced and it's hard to encapsulate in a couple sentences like I'm about to try and do here. But people who are anti-MLMs are very much pro-supporting small businesses, pro-supporting women. But in order to fully grasp that, you have to have a really good understanding of the business structure of multi-level marketing and how the money is distributed. And people are anti-MLM because multi-level marketing companies are masquerading as small businesses. They're just pretending to be small businesses. And people are against MLMs because they systematically disempower women, where 99% of women who get involved are making less than minimum wage. And this is so ironic that she has the wherewithal to acknowledge that the cashier at Target is at least making minimum wage, while people in MLMs aren't guaranteed guaranteed anything. Being in an MLM is not a job. It's a dream. It's an opportunity. It's a hope that maybe you will be able to make some money if you just work hard enough. In other words, multi-level marketing companies get primarily women to promote the products and make that company a ton of money without having to pay them anything at all. They use women for free advertising. And the way these companies get away with that legally is they don't call this a job. They don't hire you as an employee. The company is only offering you an opportunity to potentially make some money. I don't know about you, but if I was presented with two opportunities, and option A is that I go to Target, I work 20 hours a week, and I make a guaranteed $15 an hour. Yes, there are some parts of the country that have a minimum wage of $15. And option B is I spend 20 hours a week promoting an MLM company, and there's a 99% chance I won't make any money at all. I know what I'm choosing. And that's the root of the issue here. People are not supportive of MLMs because MLMs don't compensate people, typically women, for the work that they do. Right now, this woman is doing a Facebook Live while driving. She is defending the company. In a second, she's gonna pitch the business opportunity. And she's also engaging in reckless behavior and putting herself and the safety of others at risk. And is she getting paid for any of this right now? Nope. So if you're an MLM hater, I am so over it. Like just either like, I I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with MLM haters. Entire, I am so like, over it. Like. Um, it, it, it shocks me. It's 2022. Like, support each other, okay? Support each other. Quit pouring your money into Amazon and Target and Walmart and all these big box corporations where the freaking CEO at the top, you call my shit a pyramid scheme? Target's a pyramid scheme. This guy's making all the money and these people don't make shit and they're working the fucking hardest. I promise you. I cannot handle the ignorance. I apologize to you if you watch all of my videos and this is the 10,000th time you've heard me make this point. But the primary difference between a corporate pyramid and a pyramid scheme is that in a corporate pyramid structure, everybody gets paid. She even said it herself, even the people at the bottom are making at least minimum wage. Yes, the higher in a corporate pyramid you go, the more money the people in those positions make because they require more education, more experience, and more expertise to be in those positions. Does the high schooler cat cashier of Target make as much money as the CEO? Of course not, because they're not qualified and because being a cashier is a much more low risk position than being the CEO of an entire company. In a pyramid scheme or a multi-level marketing company, the people at the top of that company are still the ones making the most money, but the difference is that they sit at that position because they have recruited the most people underneath them. And to make matters worse, the people at the top of an MLM company are making the most money at the 
expense of the people in the bottom losing money. That has to be the way it works. That's not up for debate. That is the fundamental function of that business structure. The CEO of Target is not the CEO of Target because he recruited the most cashiers. And the CEO of Target isn't going to fall down the corporate pyramid if all of his cashiers quit. I mean, think about that. What's so infuriating to me is like the surface level understanding and the fact that people in MLMs don't think critically about these things. It's just like someone in their upline says, well, corporate America is a pyramid scheme too. And they're like, wow, that's a great point. And nobody does any critical thinking or any logical thinking about how that makes no freaking sense. Okay, so rant over. Now I'm gonna run my business opportunity by you because this isn't just for um, moms that want to stay home or moms at all. It's not just for people that want to stay home. It's for people that work full time and don't want to live check to check or want to bring in a little bit extra money um, for investing, for to go towards retirement so that they can maybe uh, not have to work nine to five for the rest of their freaking life until they're too old to walk to enjoy their vacation. Okay, so anyway, I have an opportunity where you can make a lot of freaking money, okay? She really just went from, it's not a scam, it's not a pyramid scheme, I don't understand why people are anti-MLM. Straight into, now here's my pitch, because I need to recruit if I'm gonna make any money in this scheme. Oh, like, come on! You get what you put in, totally, 100%, okay? You're paid for your efforts, you make commission on every single sale that you make, you make commission on every single sale that your team makes underneath you. You're not paid for your efforts, actually. You're absolutely not paid for your efforts. You are only paid a commission when you sell a product. You are not paid for the effort or the amount of time it took you to sell that product. It could take you 10 minutes to make a sale or it could take you 10 hours to make a sale and you would still be compensated the exact same amount. Lavelle promoters only make a 20% commission on their product sales. So what if it took her eight hours of cold messaging people for one person to finally say, okay, fine, I'll buy a shake mix. And then she makes an $11.60 commission. Is $11.60 for eight hours of work a fair compensation? Not in my opinion, but if she was working those same eight hours at Target, she would have made $120 instead. Um, you can earn free all-inclusive vacations for you and your and one guest, okay? Doug and I went to Mexico to Puerto Vallarta. That's the first trip we ever got to take together, you guys. Never got a honeymoon. We were treated like freaking royalty. Okay, all inclusive. It was freaking amazing. Okay, you get an auto bonus at the second rank. No website fees. You don't pay anything to run your business each month. Literally, the only thing you're ever going to spend money on is your personal product, and you're probably only going to spend money on that one time because of our referral program. And our referral program is for customers and promoters. Okay, you get two friends thriving with you that you refer and they, they purchase in the same month. The next month, you get your product for free. Free. Okay. Like Continue you're going to get credits hard. enough to buy your product with. And if you're running this as a business, you can use those credits to share with your team. You can use those credits to send to your customers to give them discounts. I'm sorry, but I don't see many other MLM companies that have this much freedom. that get their product free every month that don't have to pay website fees. Uh, <laughs> that don't have to. There we go. In 1.8 minutes, that don't turn have to like, to Ocean Beach you know Highway. what I mean? Do all that stuff. Like, you don't have to stock product. It's so easy here. Like, there's literally nothing to lose, and you don't pay anything to do it. So, literally, everything is pure profit. As we know, there's always hidden fees in MLMs. I like to call them the no fee fees, where yes, technically there's no fees that you have to pay, but then you turn around and there's a 100 PV point requirement every month if you wanna stay active and receive your commissions. And it's things like that where it's so sneaky because they can promote it like, oh, there's no fees. You don't have to spend any of your own money. There's no requirements only for you to join. And then you realize you actually do have requirements and you do have to spend your own money. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that it is pure profit with Lavelle. That still does not excuse the fact that in 2020, the majority of people in the company fall at the bottom rank. Surprise, surprise, tell me something I don't know. And that of the people at the bottom rank who were actively trying to build a team and work the business, they only made an average of $650 for the entire year. If we're gonna keep up with this wonderful minimum wage target job example that she brought up, you would have to make it to the top 3% of Lavelle to be making more money than you could working minimum wage at Target. 
bold of her to use this analogy because when we start to look at the facts and break down the numbers, the analogy does not work in her favor as well as she thought it would. Okay, the next post I have for you made my jaw drop when I saw it. This is a rep from the MLM company, The Happy Co, which we don't talk about much on this channel. This is a less well-known MLM and they sell weight loss supplements. So they have like shake mixes and diet pills and weight loss coffee, whatever that is. This Facebook post reads, eight chairs assembled, each has a capacity of 330 pounds. If that's an issue, then we need to talk. Hashtag Miss Dawn's happy fuel, hashtag lose the pounds, hashtag no more breaking chairs. So basically what she's saying is, hey, look at my new chairs that I just bought. And if you are over 330 pounds, you need to talk to me so that I can sell you my weight loss products, which in itself is appalling and distasteful, but have no fear, it gets worse. If we take a look at the comment section of this post, a woman commented saying, I am well aware I need to lose weight in which I've changed my diet and have been exercising Tuesday through Friday, but I don't weigh no 330 pounds or even close to it. I'm so sorry I broke your chair. It wasn't on purpose. Congratulations on your new set of chairs. A third person enters himself into the conversation and says, don't put yourself down like that. Accidents happen, things break. Anything can happen at any given time, hun. It's kind of funny she used the word hun. And then the happy co-rep chimes in and says, girl, please don't beat yourself up, love. Those chairs were over 50 years old, old and brittle. It's just that we have a US sized family. So I knew we had to get some side chairs rather than cheap ones. I love you, girl. Kissy heart, heart, heart. How horrifically cringy is this? Who on earth thinks that that's okay to go on Facebook and to passive aggressively and publicly fat shame somebody for breaking one of their chairs? I'm disgusted and I always have to ask myself, would this person be acting this way if they weren't in an MLM? Would a person be behaving this way publicly in the online space if they did not have something to sell? Because I don't know about you, but if I had someone over to my house and an accident of some kind happened, they broke something that I loved, they broke a chair, whatever it may be, my first instinct would never be to get on social media and try to intentionally embarrass that person. How disgusting is this behavior? Shame on her. I don't often get heated like this. I usually am pretty level-headed, but this is horrifying. And this woman knows what she was doing. She had somebody break a chair in her home and she thought to herself, this is a perfect way to pitch my weight loss supplements. How insane is that? Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> this next one is a reel from somebody who's in WFAB. And if you're not familiar, this is a big team called Work From Anywhere Boss Builders. I think it used to be Boss Babes and they changed it because of the connotation, but they used to be in the MLM Monate and they have since left Monate to move over to a cryptocurrency MLM called iGenius. And the reel says, wait, you have an automated crypto trader trading your crypto for you? And she says, 100% I do. So the point of this reel is to advertise the fact that she uses automation in her crypto currency MLM, which unfortunately for this person, I have evidence from the iGenius president himself saying that it is against the company's policy and against compliance to make this exact claim. iGenius hosted a Zoom call a couple of weeks ago and it was the president of the company clicking through slides and telling them what they can and cannot do. You know, because it's not their own business and there are rules that they have to abide by. I was on that call. I did screen record that call. I do have that call for you. So here's a small snippet from that compliance call. Um, okay, so let, let's move on. Um, this account is like speeding on the highway, almost up 2000, less than 40 days, completely hands-free. Guys, hands-free, automation, crypto, hygienist, endotech, they, they, this is absolutely uh, a post that is that is not okay. Um, doesn't have any of the disclaimers that it needs to have. And again, it's a screenshot of product performance, um, copy and paste system. Again, we've talked about that, that it's not what we want to imply. It's, you know, it's financial education, it's trade ideas, uh, so, okay. Isn't it so satisfying when you have the president of the MLM from his own mouth saying, this is against compliance, you cannot be doing this. And then you're able to show proof of an exact compliance violation. Personally, I'm having a grand old time over here because side-by-side -side comparisons like this are so powerful. It's one thing for me to show the reel and tell you how it's against compliance and show you the little text box. It is much more powerful when we have it coming from the president's mouth. I don't plan on making an entire reaction video to 
that compliance training because honestly, it was like an hour and a half of PowerPoint slides and stuff like that. But I think I did see that Savannah Marie made a video on her channel breaking it down. If you really do want like the nitty gritty details of it all, please go check out her video. But I'm absolutely going to keep this video in my back pocket and I'm going to continue to call out iGenius Huns for compliance violations because at this point they do not care, okay? They are just completely ignoring everything. This next clip is of a Kangen water rep, which is a super culty MLM. The MLM itself is called Enagic and they sell Kangen water filters. These water filters are $5,000. And I say super culty because they believe that like this is the holy grail of water. This is all you bathe with. This is all you drink. This is all you cook with. Anything else is poison basically. Very, very sketchy. I just got off a coaching call with a college student who is about to graduate and is super hype on starting his own high ticket sales business in the near future as an alternative to traditional employment. Oh, please high ticket sales business. Let's call it what it is. Okay. You're preying on college students to join your MLM once they graduate. The whole time we were talking, I was just thinking like what I would have freaking given to even know something like this existed when I was in college. I don't think we even had an entrepreneurship course <laughs> when I was in business school. And I'm just jealous, <laughs> but also like so excited for future generations that will learn that they don't have to have an employer, that they don't have to be always trying to hit quotas and benchmarks and sales goals and all of that shit and they can just work for themselves and like have the freedom to do what they really want with their lives like how exciting is that oh dear lord okay joining an mlm is not entrepreneurship being a commission-based salesperson for a super culty water filter mlm is the furthest thing from being an entrepreneur what i hate the most is that this poor college kid probably thinks he's got it set he's got it made he has a plan post graduation the primary thing that college kids want when they graduate is a plan a clear path a clear plan a clear purpose something lined up some sense of security and the pressure put on a college student to jump right into their field of study right after they graduate is enormous. And it feels like everyone in your life is asking the question, what are you doing after college? What's next? What's your plan? And unfortunately that puts college students in this extra vulnerable position of potentially jumping on the first opportunity that is presented to them. I hear examples of this all the time in my horror story videos when people write in and they say, oh yeah, I was a college student. I was looking for an internship and there were recruiters for this MLM company on my campus and that's how they got me. You know, I was feeling the pressure of finding an internship and this kind of landed in my lap and I took it. And then I realized later it was an MLM, not an internship. And in this poor guy's case, he's going to realize one day that he was recruited into an MLM and that he is not an entrepreneur in a high ticket sales business. This honestly infuriates me and it's moments like this where I'm like, where is this guy? Let me talk to him. Because we all know he's only getting one side of the story, the sketchy side, the manipulative side, the misleading side. And I want nothing more than to save people the grief of trying and failing at an MLM. And that's why I always say that my primary goal isn't really to get people out of their MLMs once they're in. Yes, that's great. That's an accomplishment in my book, but my primary goal is to prevent people from joining in the first place. Provide the education, provide the other side of the story so that they can make an educated decision on if they're going to join or not. And it eats me alive to think that there is a college student out there right now who's going to join Kangen Water and he's gonna think it's a good deal for him. And he's gonna have to learn the hard way that it's not. This is a Monate rep and the reel says, when I tell my accountant, I forgot to save for taxes again. And the caption says, another year, another whoops. So when you join an MLM company, you join as an independent contractor, not an employee. So therefore the MLM doesn't guarantee that they're ever gonna pay you. And if they do pay you, they are not responsible for taking out taxes from your income and setting them aside. But at the end of the year, they're gonna send you a 1099 form and it's gonna outline what the company 
company has paid you over the course of that year. And from there, it is your responsibility to pay taxes on that amount. So personally, myself, as someone who is technically self-employed, and I also get a 1099, Google AdSense pays me once a month for the money that I made on my YouTube ads. And when that money hits my account, I immediately take a chunk of it and I put it away. I set it aside. I do not even look at it. It's not my money. It's going to go to taxes at the end of the year. I'm realizing now I owe a lot of taxes, but that's okay because I've saved for it. I've accounted for it. It's set aside anyway. And what she's talking about here is, oopsie, I didn't set aside anything. I spent all of that money when I had it. And now I owe all this money and I didn't account for that, which to me as the viewer is not a cute look. I know she's probably just like making a joke, making a cute reel, haha, so funny. But to me, it's like you're bragging about not being financially literate? Is that it? Like you're bragging that you didn't have the foresight to set aside money for taxes. You don't know how taxes work. You don't know how being an independent contractor works. Like I, I don't get it. I feel like this is only proving the point that people who join MLMs are not business owners and they don't typically have any business education or background and they don't fully understand how to be your own boss. You wanna be your own boss when it's cute and you can post on Instagram and talk about how you're your own boss, but it's not so cute when tax season rolls around and you don't have an employer who has been setting aside that money for you all year. And now you're responsible for coming up with that money and paying it back. This one is a hilarious and unsighted reel making claims about the industry of network marketing. It says, quote, network marketing isn't a smart business model. And then she responds with second highest paid industry worldwide, creates more self-made millionaires than any other industry, traditional retail sales simplified into word of mouth sales, products move directly from the manufacturer to the end consumer. The direct selling association generated over $40 billion in retail sales last year. Develop your own independent business with no risk and minimal startup costs. Just because it's not traditional doesn't make it less legit. And I'm probably going to really have to slow this reel down because it's so fast. It's one of my pet peeves. Why are we putting paragraphs of text and you're making them stay up there for half a second? No one can read that. But of course she cites no sources. She gives no indication as to where she got all this information. So I had to go digging for myself. The first claim she makes is that it is the second highest paid industry worldwide. As far as I could tell, there is no source that says that network marketing is the second highest paying industry. However, I think I found the source she's using. This is an article about the highest paying industries from Forbes. And it says that the industry of hardware and networking sits at number two on the list. But here, <laughs> here's the thing guys. It says networking and she thinks it says network marketing, but jokes on her because it's referring to electronic servers and networks. In other words, hardware, meaning the physical parts of electronics and computers and networking, meaning the connections between the computers and the sharing and the storing and the protecting of data within an electronic network. That's what they're talking about. This girl really thinks they are talking about network marketing. I can't, okay, we're moving on. The next claim, she makes is creates more self-made millionaires than any other industry. This is 100% false. According to both Forbes and Business Insider, the industry of finance and investments has the most millionaires and billionaires. Then she says it's traditional retail sales simplified into word of mouth sales. But I would argue that network marketing is not simpler than retail. It's actually far more complicated. In a retail setting, you create the product, you sell the product, you make a profit. In network marketing, you create a product and then you have thousands of people signing up to take part in your compensation plan that you've created. And then you're paying out cuts of commissions on different levels and different bonuses. And you're also placing the reputation of your company and your brand into the hands of middle-aged women on social media. And I personally don't think that's a simplified business model. Then she says, products move directly from the manufacturer to the end consumer. No, they don't actually. MLMs very infrequently sell a product to an end consumer. They more often sell their products to their own representatives, which in my opinion, those sales are not legitimate sales to customers. The majority of people who buy the products from MLM companies are the people who are trying to participate in the compensation plan and the business opportunity as well. And finally, she says the Direct Selling Association generated over $40 billion in retail sales last year. This source was actually very easy to find. And yes, as far as I can tell, this is true. And $40 billion in sales sounds really impressive, but that figure does not distinguish between what has been sold to a legitimate end consumer and what has been sold to that company's own consultants. That figure very well could account for all the products that people buy to hit ranks. That could account for all the products people are forced to buy when they buy a starter pack. 
In other words, those sales have not been made to someone who just genuinely loves the product and wants to spend their money on it. Additionally, this data comes from the year 2020 when we were in the midst of a financial panic as a country where people were either quitting their jobs or being laid off from their jobs and they were looking for an at-home business opportunity. So that could explain the growth in this number of people signing up and buying starter packs. And finally, $40 billion in sales sounds like a lot, but that encompasses the entire industry of network marketing as a whole. But if you compare that number to normal retailers, for example, Target had $92 billion in sales that year, Costco had $162 billion, and Walmart had $519 billion in sales in 2020. So when you see the figures of these massive, wildly popular retailers, and you compare that to $40 billion for the entire industry of network marketing, it's like a drop in the bucket. It does not compare. It's not that impressive. This reel is of a Monate rep waiting in an online queue to get onto the website to purchase from their flash sale. And the audio goes, how long is this going to take? And if this isn't the perfect example of how the reps of these companies are the primary customer, I don't know what else to show you. Her caption says flash sale Friday. And the premise is that she's sitting in this online queue. She's waiting in line. She's waiting her turn to get on the website and to buy the products that just went on sale. This website is kind of hard to see, but it says once it's your turn, you will have 10 minutes to enter the website and start shopping. Now I will be the first to admit that I don't know everything there is to know about every single MLM company and all of their policies. And there's a lot of times when I have a question about something and I will post it on my YouTube community tab and I will say, former Monate rep, send me a message. Former Young Living rep, send me a message because I have a question. I need you to clarify something. So I did that yesterday in preparation for filming this video. And thankfully several former Monate reps did get back to me on Instagram. And I asked all of them the exact same question. What I wanted to know is if there was a possibility that this person was waiting in line to go on the website to place orders for other people because these flash sales happen pretty much every single Friday. Monate will take a few products. They'll put them on this crazy discount. They'll call it a flash sale. And the only two types of people who have access to these sales are the reps themselves, the market partners. And if you sign up to be a VIP customer, which is an auto ship program. So I was wondering, do the market partners have to be responsible for placing these orders for their VIPs or do their VIPs have access to the website themselves? Can they take care of their own orders themselves? And the answer unanimously, across the board, everybody who responded to me said, yes, VIPs have access to these sales. They have access to go on the website and place their own orders. So all of that to say that all of the former market partners that I talked to said that girl's waiting in line for her own stuff. And the reason that the website is so backed up on Fridays is because the market partners themselves are clogging up the site. It's not filled with legitimate customers. It's all market partners who are waiting to buy products for themselves. Here's my question question. If you are supposed to be a business owner, why is there so much hype around your products going on sale? Why are you the last to know that your product's going on sale? And more importantly, why are you flooding to rush the website and wait in line to buy that product? Sounds fishy to me. And I won't lie, the flash sales actually seem like a pretty good deal, actually. A lot of the time they really heavily discount the products and make them like $10 each or something crazy, which is a good deal if they're retail for like $50 or $60. But that's exactly Exactly the strategy. Monate is smart. They have over 300,000 market partners in the United States alone. And every single Friday, they are launching a flash sale. And a good chunk of those market partners immediately drop what they're doing. They get on the website and they buy it because they think that it's a great limited time deal. But in my opinion, that is just a scheduled weekly cash grab for the company. If sales are slow or people aren't signing up as much to be a VIP or or a market partner, at least the company knows that every Friday they can drop a flash sale and all the people they do have will come and spend some money. And they will have a guaranteed spike in sales when their own market partners go and purchase the products. So if you see a Monate market partner advertising that they are shopping the flash sale or they're waiting in the online queue, that's because they're about to go and drop a bunch of their own money on the company. This next photo is kind of piggybacking off of a clip that I showed in MLM Top Fails 38, where a young living rep was talking about how you 
your body has frequencies and oils have frequencies and they can interact with each other and it helps to elevate your mood and it makes your body emit this frequency where disease can't live there. This photo is not from that same rep, but it deals with the same subject matter. It's a picture of a little whiteboard and it says that oils, crystals, movement, fresh foods, and positive talk take a mellow frequency and they increase it to a high frequency. And the caption says, this is the stuff I personally thrive on. I love that I can share this knowledge with them so they too can understand themselves better. Our casually math lesson goes from learning area to talking energetic frequency, to how to increase one's frequency, to why it's important, to how we feel with a higher frequency. So to me, this appears like she might be homeschooling and I never intend to mom shame or judge parenting styles, but I am concerned that this seems to be the lesson that she is teaching on this day. I'm concerned because there's exactly zero research or scientific evidence to support the claim that essential oils have impact on human frequencies. Here's a comment that I got on that previous video where we kind of talked about this before. This is from one of my channel members, Carolyn, who explains it really well. She says, let me weigh in on the frequency thing as a chemist. So she's right that everything does have a frequency, but we only see those frequencies when radiation passes through an object. Basically every molecule has their electrons in what's called a relaxed state. Putting radiation in, such as infrared, microwave, or UV rays, causes the molecule to vibrate more and the electrons go up into the excited state. We can then read the frequency output as the electrons move down from the excited state to the relaxed state, giving off energy. We are not constantly giving off energy like that. And even if we were, adding oil wouldn't change that in the slightest. And thank you, Carolyn, for giving that input because you said it better than I ever could. But to me, as somebody who has a master's degree in elementary education and who is passionate about teaching children, this appears wildly inappropriate to me because it's misinformation that she has been told from her essential oil multi-level marketing company, and she is passing it off as fact to her child. Yes, frequencies are a thing. Yes, movement, healthy food, positive self-talk, all those things can contribute to a better mood and to a healthier lifestyle, but connecting the two in this way is inaccurate and it's pretty insane to me that her child is going to accept this as fact because mom said so. This is an added layer of danger that MLMs present because the teachings within the MLM often aren't factual, they're not evidence-based, so when the adults take the information from that MLM, from that source, and they impose it on their young and impressionable children, those children don't know any better than to just believe that it's true. And I wanna make it very clear that I do not mean to pass judgment on this woman as a parent. I have no doubt in my mind that she truly believes what she's teaching is true and that her intent is to educate her child in the best way possible and that she's not intentionally trying to misinform her child about anything. But I'm just using this picture as an example of how being in an MLM doesn't just impact your mindset and your worldview, but it has the potential to impact the mindsets and the worldview of the people around you that you're sharing that information with. And to me, that's just kind of wild. It's something I never really thought about before. I've absolutely thought about that in the context of being an educator and the fact that like, it is your job as a teacher to teach children the world. Like how insane is that, right? But I have not considered what the impact looks like in this setting when maybe this is like a homeschooling environment and the curriculum is not strictly regulated and she does just have the ability to be like, this is true. This is how the world works. You use oils and your frequencies increase and you get a better mood. Like the child is going to move forward thinking that that is the truth. And that's just mind boggling to me. I can't get over this. <laughs> and kind of going off of this last photo, I have a clip from a doTERRA rep and she's giving health advice about ingesting oils. Sharing some of my top remedies for managing pain naturally. I woke up with a very stiff neck the other day. So I'm using the Deep Blue plus Copaiba stick topically. This is very warming and cooling, holistic version of an icy hot. And then next I will be tackling this inflammation systemically by taking the pain bomb of essential oils, which is a combination of Copaiba, frankincense, and oregano. I'm going to add four drops of each essential oil into a veggie capsule and swallow it like a pill. This is a heavier dose of essential oil. Most oil remedies call for one to two drops. When you're tackling something major, you can up the dose. And this was the recipe that I used to manage my pain when I broke my bone and I needed surgery. So plant medicine, 
for the win. What I'm noticing is she's using terms like dose and medicine, and she seems to be talking very confidently like she knows what she's talking about. So I went to her profile to see if she has any qualifications, any credentials, but no. Are we surprised? She used to be a fitness instructor before she joined doTERRA, but she has no medical license, no professional background to be giving this kind of advice. It's well known across the board that it is not recommended to ingest essential oils. There is a bit of gray area because some people will say, well, there's not conclusive evidence that it's gonna like significantly harm you in small doses, but there's also no evidence to suggest that it actually helps with anything. And there's no research done on the lasting impact of ingesting oils over an extended period period of time. So knowing all of that, most healthcare professionals are like, you know what, just don't do it because it most likely does nothing and we don't know what the risk is basically. But her lack of credentials isn't stopping this lady from prescribing people eat oils for pain medicine. She calls herself a holistic health coach and she has a website, she has a blog, she has a YouTube channel, all dedicated to educating on essential oils. This is dangerous, you guys. Please do not take medical or health advice from somebody who's only background is that they joined an MLM company. In my opinion, this woman seems like a compliance department nightmare. Pretty much everything on her page goes against doTERRA's policies and procedures about product claims and health claims. But guess what? Compliance violations are pretty hard to nail down. They're pretty hard to hold people accountable for because people can say pretty much whatever the heck they want to say on the internet. And these companies aren't ever likely to catch it unless someone directly reports it to the company. And even if it does get reported, the company has the right to do something about it or not. And in my opinion, I also speculate that companies might be less likely to do anything about it if that person is at a top rank in the company or if they make the company a lot of money. It's just astounding to me that people can pay a startup fee and all of a sudden they call themselves coaches or gurus or in any way qualified to be giving health advice. It is insanity. And that, my friends, is all that I have for you for this MLM Top Fails video. I feel like I really took it for a ride on that one. But of course, before we go, I have a comment shout out. This is from another channel member, Kayla. It was perfect for this video. I could not help but include it. She commented this on MLM Top Fails 38 the first time we were talking about oils and frequencies. And Kayla says, that young living hun is living on a different frequency than the rest of us, all right? Absolutely perfect. I love it. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.